Welcome. We are so glad you joined us today for our December edition of Native Plants at Noon. I'm Tammy Thompson, and I'm the Outreach and Conference Manager at Deep Roots KC. You know, this is my favorite day of the month, and I'm excited that you all are here. I do want to acknowledge we had some pretty wild weather uh, over the last 24 hours, and I hope this finds you all really well, and we hope you found, we find this um, find that you don't have damage or, or limited damage. We know that there were a lot, of, a lot of incidents of damage last night, so we hope you are well. I look forward to seeing you next year, 2021, for Native Plants at Noon. And as we continue to improve on this, we want you to share with us some of the topics that you want, to, uh, want us to cover. We uh, will continue to cover the beauty and the creatures and all the, the wonders of Native Plants next year. But we really want to hear it from your perspective, too. So drop us a note. During the program today, please use the Q&A tool for questions. So if you have any questions, pop those in the Q&A, or if you're on Facebook, pop them in the, in the Zoom tool there. I will use the chat feature to communicate some things with you, like the plants that Alex and Sydney are, um, are sharing with us. Speaking of Alex and Sydney, we, were, we first want to express a big thank you to the Missouri Department of Conservation for their partnership on this series and all of the things they do to encourage and empower people to plant natives, as well as just be outdoors in general. With that said, I'd love to welcome Native Landscape Specialists, Sydney Ross and Alex Daniel at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. Alex and Sydney, take it away. Hello, welcome. Hello. This is Alex. That's Sydney. And we're the Native Landscape Specialists here at the Anita B. Gorman Conservation Discovery Center in Kansas City. And we have a great show for you today. Um, we're in the thick of winter beauty and winter holidays. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about some native plants that you might see in your garden that give you winter interest, some gift ideas, and some fun places that you can visit with your friends and family during the holiday seasons. Yeah, um, so Tammy, uh, first of all, we're going to have Tammy drop our late acknowledgement into the chat there. And um, like she said, if you have any questions, we'll have a couple of spots where we'll pause later on. So yeah, we'll, we'll have some time for those as well. Yeah, and uh, before we, be, we get started, I do want to mentioned about that land acknowledgement for indigenous cultures that have resided and currently reside in this area. Um, it's a slightly updated version and to us it feels more genuine that it shows um, our appreciation for these cultures and uh, we show this appreciation by stewarding the earth with native plants. So thank you for reading that acknowledgement and we'll start back with Yeah, so these are some of the plants that we have here at the Discovery Center. Um, we want to talk a little bit about, should we talk about, well, how we should sustainably harvest these species yeah. before we talk about what they are? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point because uh, there, there's a lot of ways you can go about it. Um, some practices are preferred over others. So do you want to talk a little bit about that since you're yeah. the guru of maintenance around here? Yeah, so some of these are um, shrubs, which can be cut without, you know, keeping in mind that you want to have a cutting garden is something that you want to um, keep in mind when you're doing your fall cleanup. So maybe you want to leave some of this stuff standing. I mean, you should leave this stuff standing anyway, but it's a good excuse to leave your stuff standing because then you can repurpose it and make it into a beautiful um, holiday um, decor. Decor, yeah. yes, that's right. And then there's some <laughs> other uh, tips too, like if you think about looking at your landscape and your design, maybe cutting pieces that are towards the back, or maybe underneath uh, larger branches, so it's not floppers. Floppers. That's a great idea. Yeah. You know, so some things to think about. Um, always uh, procure your pieces of plant material from your own property. Please do not go to public parks or um, conservation areas and cut or remove plants. That's a big no-no. Plant these in your yard. Plant in your yard. Plant in excess, so then you can have some to take uh, for your. Food. That's so. right. Let's talk about this plant first. Um, it has a lot of common names. Uh, we have it listed as wild hydrangea or smooth hydrangea, which is hydrangea arborescens. Did I get that right, Alex? So close. Uh, Ar arborescence. Arborescence, <laughs> yeah. 
and you know, I just learned that um, the arborescence part of this Latin name has to do uh, with it relating to a, a shrubby tree. They, they refer to it as that because even though it's a small shrub, uh, it is very woody and tree-like, so. Yeah, and um, another interesting thing about this this shrub is not to hate on feldspars, but I'm going to, I'm going to Please do, do that. Do. <laughs> Always. Um, these little flowers here on the outside edge, the smooth hydrangea just has a few small ones. These are actually fake. These are not real flowers. The actual flowers are in the flower head up here on the top of the panicle. All of these little brown things, which were white when they were mm -hmm. flowering, they're, they're, they're dried now, but these fake flowers are here to entice pollinators to come in. And the bees love oh this hydrangea. They, they do really the fast do. run. The fast run. Yes, there's some flowers that, that bees do like a really, really fast <laughs> run on. And it's so fun. But so this one is the Bee 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 as the cultivar, Annabelle, Snowball, like all these different cultivars of hydrangeas. But this one is the true native. This one also, if you leave the stems up, they're hollow on the inside and we have found solitary bees yes. in them later in the season. They, they overwinter yeah. or they, they lay their eggs, which overwinter yeah. and, and emerge the following year. Yeah, it's so, a great pollinator plant and a habitat plant. And it is. It is. So it's one of my favorite uh, native shrubs to use in landscape design, especially if you have shadier areas. It does prefer a park sun. Um, the plant gets to be about three to five feet. And um, I was reading about it recently because um, I do have a garden I've planted this in, how to maintain it in the winter time. You can cut back the uh, dead branches in late winter or early spring, um, and that will promote a uh, new growth. So the, the growth does come from the fresh branches. So anything that's like dead and you snap it it's like really dry and not green then you know it's dead you kind of cut it down yeah this is a good time I, I, you're safe to do it now too because this is a well who knows we've had some weird stuff lately so, yeah. so the next one that we have here is great yeah, yeah. i think so okay. it'll be easier to see it this one is called the Bee uh, name possum pot um, this is a holly. It is Ilex decidua. That's right. Also known commonly as deciduous holly. Uh, so deciduous means that they they lose their leaves, um, and a lot of hollies are um, they usually keep their evergreen leaves, but not in this case. That's right. So this is a small tree. Um, it can do part sun to full sun. I've read that if this is in full sun, it can turn more thicket like. Mm -hmm. uh, but the example we have here at the Discovery Center, it is in our, is it in the upland yeah. area? Yeah, so it's planted woods? under some really mature oaks and yeah. um, other bigger trees. It's but. a beautiful specimen tree, though. It's, I would say it's about 15, 20 feet tall. Maybe? Yeah, and you can it's cut it shrubbier. Too. Okay. Yeah, you can, make, you can cut it down shrubbier. And then another important thing to remember with some of these, um, especially berry producing plants, you want to make sure that you plant several um, if they are dioecious because they uh, need the female and the male flowers. So this is one of those where the, the tree mostly is dioecious. So you need to have um, a male and a female. Yeah, two different trees with one with the male flowers and one with the female flowers to get these berries. Yeah, and these, we cut these maybe just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and we did not the, the cardinals, the <laughs> they, cardinals love, love it. they love it which is great too so if you're looking to attract birds to your garden this winter i uh, think about fruit bearing native trees and shrubs yeah um, this is a great option yeah and then when this when this goes into your, when you're done with your holiday decorations this goes into your compost pile or whatever this is still going to be yeah. And we have a little wildlife offering area out here in the courtyard yes. where we'll take all of our holiday green things and lay it on the rock and see what squirrels and birds eat it. So it's it's pretty fun. It's fun to watch. If you have a window somewhere, like make an offering bowl. <laughs> Thank you, Mother back. Nature. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Oh, speaking of berries. Oh, 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 okay. So this. Should I pull it out? Is it? What do you think? Yeah, sunlight. I think we'll be okay. We've got some fun sunlight coming through the windows yeah. here. So this is, um, uh, it goes by a few common names. I like calling it coral berry, but it's also known as buckbrush or Indian currant. And uh, we have this here in our courtyard as well. It is a small shrub. It gets to be about maybe three or four feet tall. I think I've heard it gets up to five feet, but I haven't seen I've it. I've never seen it. Yeah, but you find it in your woodlands. Uh, so you don't see this commonly here in Kansas City. Um, if you're hiking around in the woods. Um, but yeah, you learned something really interesting about the berries. Yeah, so the berries, um, they're, they're 
technically edible, but they contain a toxin that you're not supposed to eat them in in large quantities. And they they're specifically very toxic to fish. And uh, indigenous people use them to. Um, it's still in Central and South America. They still use this method where they crush the berries and they put it into the stream or lake, and it does a fish kill. And they have the fish that's so using cool. this berries. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, and because it's not super toxic to people, the fish don't become dead toxic if you eat it. I guess. Yeah, they're just like breathing it in. Or not, you know, like they, yeah, they're taking it in. processing the water. They get stunned. That was fascinating. This, yeah, they, they, they around the world they use other different berries and poisons. That was cool. I didn't know that until today. So I thanks know, for finding so that cool? out. I, I also I love this shrub. This this should be where your where you have bush honeysuckle, you should have coral berry. Yeah. Because they take up the same habitat. A lot of bush honeysuckle has displaced a lot of coral berry. Yeah. This is a perfect replacement for um for bush honeysuckle if you can if you can find it. If you have the right yeah. light situation, um, if you've got uh, the the right shrub like area where you want to put some lower shrubs mm -hmm. we have this growing in our court in our bird courtyard area and it's perfect for that we might try propagating some of it for our uh, uh go native event in april because we have a hard time actually finding this at local nursery so if you're a local nurse or native plant nursery yeah. owner let us know <laughs> but we did find it through curry moon nursery on their yeah. website they're based in minnesota um, but so we hate to show you a really cool plant and then say, hey, you can't really find it. But we're hoping we can find a way to get this plant to be more accessible. Yeah, we've heard that it's difficult to grow nice and easy. Yeah, but it's but it does it spreads nicely by yeah. by rhizome uh, once you get it started. Yeah. And then a couple of plants we're going to talk about very briefly before we move on. Uh, we have the common milkweed back here. You can see these gorgeous seed pods. They're so beautiful. They're, they look aren't like they stunning? Beans. Yeah. So we uh, left some of these up in uh, several of our prairie areas. They are the taller species of milkweed. So uh, again, if you're planting your garden this winter for spring planting, this would be a plant you'd want to have in the back side or a more naturalized looking garden. This is not a formal plant, common milkweed. Um, yeah, it just it, it 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 requires more space and it can be more prolific than some of our other milkweeds. Yeah. But they do pop up, tend to um, cause concern for HOAs and things like that. But you know, right plant, right place, and that's not just with the plant um, in the right sun and soil conditions, but also thinking about aesthetically and the kind of they can keep it or the type of garden you have. So. Uh, so that's a great one too. I, I'm a big fan of the shape, and then I like to have the little silky uh, bits hanging out in there too for my holly <laughs> green. But and then this beauty here is our friend Smooth Sumac. Um, I actually can't remember the Latin name of this one, but it is gorgeous. It's a small tree. Um, you all may remember this from previous episodes, but these red berries we cut these like a month ago, didn't we? Yeah. And you can tell the color still persists, um, and um, I just think it's gorgeous. It's that nice pop of red for the holiday greenery. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah. That's and uh, this one, this it. is another one that's got multiple uses. Uh, we have it as a, I'm called a specimen plant. Yeah. Where we have it here growing, and it's um, it provides kind of a tropical looking like a like middle story uh, layer yeah. garden. Um, they spread and, like they spread very well. They spread so. right now nicely yeah. well. Um, and also the birds love the berries. We got to use before they take them totally clean. And you can also make <laughs> sumac aid. <laughs> I like these. <laughs> yes, they're kind of sour. I love yeah. sour candy and things like that. So um, I haven't actually tried one while they're dry. I'm sure they're still kind of sour, but you were telling me that it's actually the crystals on the outside, on the outside that has that sour tang to it. Um, yeah. Now you aren't supposed to eat the berry, just and not this water. <laughs> <laughs> I need some lemonade, okay? Um, but you can just kind of taste it and then spit the seed out and it has a sour flavor to it. Um, but it's even worth this plant is beautiful in the fall too because those big tropical looking leaves turn bright red. Yeah. Um, it's a great plant. Yeah. Uh, but then you can also see some examples of how we use some of our holiday greenery. Um, we have, you all are probably familiar with um, Eastern red cedar it is a, a juniper native juniper here in missouri um this year they are covered in berries this is that's not a very good example of it, but <laughs> i know as i say that 
Uh, this one over here has a ton of blueberries, and we've noticed in general the juniper or the eastern red cedars are undergoing masking, which is when they produce an abundance of berries. Um, so different trees and shrubs will will do this at um, different points uh, throughout the years, um, and it just depends on berry predation and the balance between the animals that eat their fruit and then the ability for these trees to really reproduce. Yeah, so, so we use that, we use cedar. Um, there's, there are several programs uh, that usually you can go cut cedar, um, hopefully next year. <laughs> well, how yeah. the wild plants want to get, because that was my thing. It's so fun. I haven't been but, to it, but so it's really nice that we get to do it. Yeah, um, it's because cedars encroach on prairies. So yeah. during prairie restorations, typically they, um, you could have, free range to the cedar. Obviously ask for permission, but yeah. this is a tree, this is a native tree, but it also encroaches in on prairie spaces, on prairie spaces. So, yeah. so we walk well, we'll over, over to our uh, gift shop. If we have any questions while we're walking over there. We do ladies have some questions. Um, and let's get close to you because we're we've got our our audio comes in and out. We can see your faces, but we, our audio okay. is coming in and out a little. But we have some great questions. Uh, Julie asks, "How big does possum haw get?" That's a great question. Possum haw gets between ten to fifteen feet tall, though our um, specimen tree here seems to be closer to twenty feet. I would think it's a lot yeah. taller than what I've read the typical yeah. height to be. We don't prune ours back, but you can, and that's how, what, how you would typically see them is pruned yeah. down. And don't um, forget, if it's in full sun, it tends to spread more in a thicket manner. Yeah, so ours so, is yeah. reaching. So when we plant um, under trees or next, or in the, sh the outer shade of trees, um, these little smaller species will tend to grow taller to get a little bit more sunlight. Great question. Perfect. Yeah. It is a good question. Christine asks, how do you harvest seed from the wild hydrangea flower heads? Mm. Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I was reading about this yeah. um, actually. The seeds are so tiny. Um, so I I've actually read the better method is to propagate by cuttings. They root pretty easily from what I've read. I haven't done it myself. Oh. Now it's something I want to try. Um, but I would imagine you would take um, a cutting from um, probably in like late spring, early summer. And then you could buy some root hormone and dip the tip in there and uh, plant it that way. But the seeds are so small. So do you have yeah. any experience well, collecting seeds? No, I don't, but I'll just say from my experience, I've never seen it spread by seed, never. Mm. Which is indicative oh. of that it's not, not that it's, it requires something more than, <laughs> than ignoring and it. Seed. <laughs> it's lay on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we try that. Of some of these plants are tricky to grow very I'm tricky seeing. they have very complicated relationships with the soil the mycorrhizae the bacteria the everything insects, like it's very birds. difficult to yeah. reproduce some of these conditions so, yeah uh, but we've got some great nurseries out there trying to crack these codes that's right <laughs> yeah. should we take one right. more question we yeah, on. we'll do one more and then we'll do try to get the rest of later. Melissa asks, what was that word for when the juniper goes through an abundance of fruiting? It is masting, M-A-S-T-I-N-G. And actually, um, if you've read Braiding Sweetgrass, the first chapter talks all about pecan trees and uh, the cycle of masting. Um, and I'm oh. sure Doug Tallamy has it quite a bit. Yeah, we, we the, heard about it when yeah. we, uh, Doug Tallamy's later uh, oops, uh, webinar that he's giving, he talks about oak, um, oak masting because mm -hmm. the acorns, um, the oaks may be uh, uh, reacting to how many predators they have. So they'll shut off production for a year mm -hmm. and then the next year um, turn it back. But you on. know what's interesting? So this is some, this is a total sidebar and I'll keep it brief, but there's a conversation among scientists about how masting happens with certain species like across an entire region and that there might be some kind of um, mycorrhizae connection with that. It's mushroom not internet. Mushroom, mushroom internet. internet. I see mushroom. Right. So uh, <laughs> I found that really fascinating and yeah. I want to learn more about it. And I hope I get that book I uh, by Doug Tallamy for, for the holidays. This year, oh, I really want it. Mm, well, okay. Got your gift idea. 
Um, I think, yeah, that's what we were kind of hoping or we were kind of imagining happened because we noticed a lot of places didn't have cedar berries last year. And now even like, the burrows mm-hmm. trees last year didn't have as many yeah. acorns. And this year they do too, which I don't think is connected to the uh, uh, red cedars per se, but I think it's kind of interesting to notice. So yeah. keep an eye out. Track yeah. Your observations <laughs> each year. Trees are smart. They're really smart. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> they are. All right. We'll let, we'll follow you t- to the, to the shop. Perfect. And as we're walking over here, I do just want to say our hours here at the Discovery Center are Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and uh, Saturdays, 9 to 4. So if you want to come in and check out our gift shop or see any of our holiday displays, you can visit at those times. So, okay. So the first one I want to show you is right here. Here's our lovely gift shop. Take my money, why don't you? (laughs) So yeah, what book do you have? Okay. I thought this would be a great one to recommend. It's Discover Missouri Natural Areas, A Guide to 50 Great Places by Michael Lee. I'm gonna say his name name wrong because of a show (laughs) we like to watch. (laughs) 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 He has given some amazing presentations on uh, native areas in Missouri. And this is a great book that just shows you all these different places you can visit. And it's uh, separated by different regions. So here's the Ozark Highlands. Um, and it gives different areas that you can visit. Um, I'm always looking for different places to hike and explore. So this is a great um, book to reference. I want to go to all 50. I know. Oh, that's a great (gasps) We just went to Mingo. We did. See, there's Mingo. It was so awesome. Really fun. So these are destinations. Have a hiking enthusiast friend or loved one. This could be a great book. For sure. And then another one that, okay, I just want, can I plug this one over here? Because I got this book for my nephew, who is six. Um, and he, my, my brother, who's his father, um, told me that every night for about two months, they looked at a different bug. <laughs> oh, I just opened up to the, oh, the exact bug. um, so he's six years old and he's really into it. And I'm probably going to get him the show me herbs book for this holiday season. You can see right here. Um, so there's some really great books, uh, for kids. There's even some, uh, we've got singing in sex in Missouri here. So there's a lot of really fun, um, wildlife-based books that you could get for kids even at our gift shop. Okay, hit us with the last one, Alex. Okay. Which one would you plug? Well, I know I love to get books <laughs> for my father and everyone. Yes. I already got this one. <laughs> this is one of my favorite um, cookbooks that uses, it uses wild edibles, it uses wild game from Missouri. It's just everything wild Missouri. And you know my favorite is Mushroom. mushroom. I can say <laughs> I don't have to pick the exact thing, but there's mushroom recipes in here too. <laughs> and um, so this is a really great one for the the cook slash forager in your family. Or hunter. There's yeah the, the game recipes as well. Yeah. yeah. So you all should stop by, check it out, um, see what other kind of goodies we have here. Maybe you're getting a gift for yourself because don't forget to treat number one in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna make our way to our final destination and as we're walking Tammy if you could throw some questions our way and we'll answer them as we make our way we we will do perfect and I love just to plug that that gift shop it is one of my absolute favorite places to go it's inviting it has all kinds of nice books and just little tidbits that you're not going to find anywhere else so here's a question from Elizabeth do you put any of these and I assume your greens in water to keep them fresh so like the juniper greens that kind of stuff you definitely can okay I'm not gonna walk backwards (laughs) okay yes if you're uh cutting for green and alive you can uh, give them a fresh cut and stick them in a uh, cup of water change that water out regularly and it'll keep it lasting longer now if it's already brown and dead you don't have any need to which is great because then it lasts for a lot longer. That's how we cut most of our stuff. We don't, we wait until the last minute to cut our cedars. Um, so we just cut our cedars for our, our program for for making these uh, last. It was last, it was, it was on Tuesday. Yeah, it was two days ago. It feels like a month has passed off. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to preserve them and keep them fresh. Okay. What else we got? All right. Here's a question from Patricia. Early on, when we were talking about the hydrangea, it says, "Is that also called Saint Anne's lace?" 
No. You are you thinking of Queen Anne's Lace, maybe? I'm um, not familiar maybe. with that. I don't know that one as a, I mean, I, I guess it could be a, a um, common name, but I, I, mm. I don't know that one. Yeah. Always remember the Latin name um, when you're trying to find your plants. Yeah, especially, uh, like I said, with, with my Grisha, because the cultivars are rampant, <laughs> you're mostly just going to find cultivars of them at nurseries, yeah. except for the Queen Anne's Lace. Yes. Um, but they All do right. look like the Queen Anne's Lace, so maybe I was, I, I wondered if maybe what they are. They do have kind of a, yeah, the white flower. <laughs> when it's in bloom, it is a white flower. It's dried brown. And Tammy, how is the audio currently? Because we're kind of in an echoey space. So if we stay close I, to you guys, I think we're going to be good. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. So um, some Alex and I like to have uh, outdoor-based holiday traditions. Um, for me, I love um, to go hiking in the woods. Even though there's not a whole lot to see, I love the uh, bold textures. I even like the, I think there's a lot of color in the woods still this time of year. Um, and then there's also lots of birds. So um, we have this great exhibit here that talks about different conservation areas here um, near Kansas City uh, through the Department of Conservation and elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and our, yeah. our uh, well, I mean, one thing I love is uh, experience gifts mm -hmm. for Christmas. Yeah. And if, if, if y'all haven't been to some of these areas, like we're, yeah, there, there's there's a whole experiences to have that that will lack memories and pictures will yes. last forever and do some family mm -hmm. photos or a picnic. Yes. Yes. And with all this like mild weather we've been having, there's no reason to not go check out some of these spots. So yeah. we're gonna tell you about a few of our favorites. Yeah. Um, do you want to yeah. go? Okay. You, I don't know oh, a lot yeah. about this area. Okay, so Kinsora, tell us. Kinsora is up north. It's between uh, Smithville and Platte City, and it's uh, it's awesome. It's a it's a filled in wetland area, so you'll find lots of waterfowl and lots of amphibians in the spring and summer. Um, right now, though, you're gonna have lots and lots of migratory flocks there. But you're going to see that as a theme for what we recommend here. Yeah, but yeah, this place is great. I just started going there last year and I, I can't check it out again. Yeah, we'll so, have to go this winter. Yeah, that's one of our, that's our uh, conservation area. It's our department of conservation area. So what do you got? So well, tell us about okay. one of your favorites. Okay, so um, I mentioned how I like to walk through the woods and maybe I, um, what, what's it called? Hit the lead. Is that the phrase? I'm really what? good at buried the buried lead. The lead. Oh, I'm really good at messing those up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just you missed it. I totally missed it. Okay. So um Hidden Valley is a really beautiful park um that is north of Kansas City. I can never remember exactly where it is, which is hilarious because I've been there probably a dozen times. Um, but it is a Blackstone. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it's a loop trail. Um, they have beautiful spring ephemerals during the spring, but in the winter time too, it is just, it's so, I don't know, there's so many woodpeckers I've been seeing there now, um, not only at Hidden Valley, but also at Slope Park, which is another great place here in Kansas City. Um, and in fact, when I was at Slope Park maybe two weeks ago, I saw three different types of woodpeckers. I saw yes. a, actually, hey, Kristen, she's a birder. <gasps> this is our camera person. Uh, I saw a red-headed woodpecker at yes. Slope. And I saw a downy and then the red, the red belly, of course. But anyway, so um, woods, you can find a lot of woodpeckers this winter. Yeah, and it's easy, so much easier to see when there's no leaves on the No. Yeah. And you can really get a feel. What I love to, I love Hidden Valley. Yeah. As much it's as so winter, good. there's almost no better place in Kansas City. And you can see the valley. When the leaves are off the trees, you can see how expansive this place is. Yeah. It is truly a Hidden Valley. And if y'all haven't checked it out, Get your hiking shoes on and go. Yeah. Beautiful. And if you need other ideas of conservation areas, again, another reason to come visit us here, you can see this beautiful exhibit that talks about the wonderful places you can visit around Kansas City. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's probably all we've got for today. Okay. Um, but before we maybe have ever if we have time for more questions, Tammy, I don't really know what time it is, <laughs> but. You guys are doing really well on time. It's amazing how when you're only covering several hundred square feet, it goes a lot, it goes a lot faster versus, you know, 
three What's acres of, okay. yeah. <laughs> when you're outside, you're covering acres of, of space. So it does take a little longer. So I want to ask you, I do have a couple of questions in queue. Uh, I want to ask you, what is, if you were going to go to only one spot in the winter, which one would it be and why? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Can we both answer? <laughs> yes, we, please. Okay, if we get two answers, right? Because one of us. <laughs> yes, we well, have. Yeah, there are two of you, two answers. For a winter yeah. right now? Okay, I'm just going to say. Oh, we can't even do this. Less bluffs. Yeah. That's less oh. bluffs. You haven't been there, I, and I know I keep mentioning birds, but winter is birding season. Yes. It's great. Um, you can see thousands of migratory birds, eagles, Bounce. trumpeter swans, snow geese, other kinds Regular of Regular geese. Regular geese. <laughs> it's incredible. There's two lots there. of kids. So, okay. <laughs> that is what I would say. Yes. Um, I went there for the first and time last year, and it blew my mind. Very oh, cool. Yes, it's so fun. And that one is perfect. a perfect experience gift because yeah. you don't even have to get out of the car. The loop yes. itself is a driving loop and it has mm -hmm. an auto tour that goes with it too. So make a whole day awesome. trip of it. It's it's yeah. north of St. Joe, so it is a little bit of a trek from Kansas City. Totally worth it. But go totally back and visit St. Joe, have a nice meal, get some carry out if you want. You know, yeah. that's what that's what that's right. Yeah. And then mine, okay, I didn't talk about my holiday tradition. Oh no, so sorry. My holiday tradition so is to um hike the tall grass prairie on Thanksgiving. So we oh. did um, um, so on Thanksgiving sweet. this year, and uh, that's a lovely place. But it's all grass prairie to too. Right now, it's it's so fun. We went to Jerry Smith Park the other day, and he had a great time. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, they're so amazing. I I love Les Bluffs too. I've been going there since I was a kid, and yeah. last year we counted fifty eagles, and we didn't oh. even have to look. We didn't it's even so have to cool. look, you know, you just see, you saw so many. So it's amazing. And, and that um, folks with mobility impairments, you know, maybe you can't get out and hike. It's a great, it's a great um, place to go. So yeah. you guys have so many sp spots. I didn't know about Kenzora and I'm close to that. Yeah. I <laughs> love wetlands. That's a great yeah. spot. Thank yeah. you go up there and that's actually a really great place i was going to mention this too to see some of our native shrubs Ooh. and wetland species in their natural habitat it is that's covered nice. with button bush. i was going to say probably yes. button bush, right? mostly button bush which is fantastic. another great native shrub, another great native shrub. see yeah. my 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 scarf is button bush <laughs> <laughs> look at that yeah all right we okay so now to get to the other people's questions you know the folks that we're here for um Oh, Amy says uh, for 2022, so let's think about this. Uh, she'd be interested in learning more about edible native plants. Yeah. 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 And I know you guys know the, the deal on that. Yeah. Uh, um, we really appreciate, uh, please, like any suggestions or ideas you have, let us know. Uh, we yeah. totally nerd out about different things, but we want to know what you want to nerd out about. Yeah. So that would be great. Yeah. yeah, that would it's be really great. 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 We do a few wild edibles binged programs, and mm. we have had them in the past too. And we'll have a, a purely wild edibles um, uh, programs in the future. And I want to suggest Baroques too, because Baroques, they do not only that's a great place. Oh, to yes. Excellent wild edibles program. But that's just a challenge for us to get our game together <laughs> and to learn more about native edibles for you all in the new year. I love that. Yes. Um, and some of these are just really nice, but I want to tell you, I want to read them out loud. Uh, Lillian uh, says, many thanks, safe and happy holidays, wishes to all. Uh, Ruth Rose says, thank you so much. Wonderful. Uh, Barbara McCluskey asks, what was the location? And uh, Barbara, I think we might be talking about the, the locations of the, of the, areas that we discussed. So we will get those addresses, Barbara, Barbara and pop those in uh, on Facebook in the comments, Barbara. Mm -hmm. So we'll get you those, uh, the names of the locations that we talked about and the general direction. Sometimes there's not a specific address. You just kind of follow the signs in town, yeah. I've noticed. 
Um, we'll give you the insider scoop on how to get, get on. We'll send trips. you the GPS uh, location. Yeah, the, the, yeah sure. exactly. The latitude and longitude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marsha says, can we get a close up to CA descriptions again? I'm not sure what. Oh, yeah. Oh, you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do that one. one. Yeah. Oh, nice. The Kenzora, yes. Yeah. And we can send you photos too of yeah. those to share on Facebook. Absolutely. Um, but you know, um, if you are here in town, please come visit too. And we would love to oh. see you. If you do visit, say hi, because we love, we love to hear if you're uh, enjoying the program and enjoying the center. So. Perfect. Yeah, I, I'm there every week and I love it. I love it. I see something new every week. Uh, Helen says, just visited Les Bluffs. Beautiful. Saw lots of eagles. Uh, Loretta says, can you please put the name of the locations in the chat? Uh, something Bluff. It looks like somebody else did that. Thank you so much for oh our, our other chat participants. Uh, <laughs> Shelly. Shelly. That's right. We take care of each other around here. Um, <laughs> Shelly says Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you for all you do. Uh, then we've got our sweet people who answered our questions. Someone else dittoed. Yes, they wanted to hear about edible plants. Yes. Jerry, yeah, Ken Snow is doing a testimony on Jerry Smith Prairie. Yeah. Jerry Smith Park is a great place too. Um, so Missouri we have love some really beautiful and diverse areas, um, ecologically speaking. No better place like Missouri, am I right? Kansas there really is isn't. Missouri, <laughs> yeah, Kansas is good too. Uh, Missouri puts so many resources into our our parks too, and it's just uh, Missouri Department of Conservation. We, I'm so I feel so blessed to to be able to take part in those. Usually within a you know 15 or 20 minutes from from most of us, there's a there's a location for us to explore. Yeah, I think uh, if you drive down any highway in Missouri and you're gonna come across a conservation area, there's so many of them out there. And like I said, it's my goal. I want to visit everyone. <laughs> Let's make I want to go to everyone. That's right. <laughs> it, and we just have some really nice notes. Amy Bott says thanks. Laura Sloan says thank you. I love your enthusiasm. Of course, we love your enthusiasm. Um, Luann says, you ladies are the most adorable plant nerds ever. We appreciate you. And I agree. Oh, Amy, exactly. Amy Botts uh, says mushrooms too. And I know you two would be all about the mushrooms. I know that. I try to only bring them up one time. For yeah. <laughs> They're out there. Tell you what, look, look for the oysters in the winter. Exactly. Oh, speaking of, and, I'm sorry, I just remembered this though. Tammy, um, I am offering a winter beauty virtual program on January 29th. Uh, so oh, if uh, nice. out there, if you want to learn more about what plants in your landscape can add winter interest to your own garden, please uh, register. It's a free event. It is on Saturday, January 29th. Um, I would love to have you there. There's a virtual and an in-person version. So um, I think Tammy has the links to that. And if not, we can um, include it in the Facebook post later. Just almost forgot about that. <laughs> and we know what, what I wanted to let everyone know, because I have several questions in there. When we have this posted on, on Facebook, once we download it and we get it on YouTube, we actually have it on our website. And we have it on Facebook as well. So we post it on Facebook and then we answer your questions on Facebook. And we'll answer some of those questions on YouTube as well. So if you want to see this video later, we'll also have that information for you so that you don't miss the resources, the great resources. Uh, Alicia, Alicia says, I would love to see something on native orchids. Oh, for next year. Oh, gosh, that struck a chord. <laughs> Adventure. Yes. Oh, well, I'm very quickly, if you go to Cooley Lake, which is another one of our awesome CAs, they have putty root orchids all over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, they do. Orchids.
kids are so beautiful and very mysterious. mysterious. Very so mysterious. That's a great idea. But so much fun. I yeah. love that idea. We will next time. Yes. We want to go off site anyway, so we're going to have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. smell it. Yeah. All right. And Big Buffalo. Somebody said Big Buffalo description. Big Buffalo. Yep. This, this this is one that I haven't been to and I need to get there. Same. I've heard such great things about it. And uh, it looks wonderful. Look at all those rocks. That's a lot of rocks. Some cool rocks in there, I bet. Okay. It is. Yes, perfect. Oh, and it's full of flowering dogwood. Ooh. Or state tree. What do you know? What do you know? Beautiful. Yeah, that one I think is about, it's, on the, it's probably an hour south of here. Yeah, I haven't been there either, but again, so many different places it, within Missouri, not far from Kansas City even. Yeah, lots of adventures ahead of us. Just have to drive outside of the honeysuckle circle, mm -hmm. and then you've got really nice Exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am so grateful for you too. I'm so excited to work with you in 2022 as well. And all of the great ideas, you, there's just like a love fest going on in the chat. So as I finish up, you guys take a peek at the chat and, uh, and check out all of the, all of the great things people have to say about uh, you. We want to express our gratitude for the Missouri Department of Conservation for lending us your talents uh, every oh. month. Uh, it's been, it's been a joy. So I'll go ahead and, and wrap up a little bit late. Uh, really want to thank you and looking forward to, uh, some time off. Enjoy your hikes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share, um, my screen oh, with Lord. you. <laughs> All right. All right, so now I'm sharing my screen uh, so that you can see our website as well. Uh, we, we talked a lot about going out to the Missouri Department of Conservation, Anita B. Gorman Center, and all of those other great spots that they talked about. To learn more about what's going on at the Discovery Center, you can go to mdc.mo.gov and search for events or locations. For the, for the locations of other spots. Uh, as we close, we wanna tell you about our shop on the Deep Roots website. To answer a couple of the questions in the chat too, uh, the Deep Roots website is where we post all of our videos from Native Plants at Noon. It's also where we have a, a little shop. So if you're looking for some, some unique gifts, our shop at Deep Roots has a few fun things. We have some bumper stickers, uh, Ask me about my milkweed is a great one. Uh, milkweed, this is your brain on milkweed is one of my favorites too. We also have some great note cards. Uh, those are just lovely. There, I think there are seven different uh, different ones on there, and they're by a, a local artist as well. So they're just lovely. Uh, as we close, uh, wanted to to mention that if you're on our Deep Roots website and you would consider uh, making a donation, we'd be very grateful. Again, as we close out December, 2021 with Native Plants at Noon, we wanna thank you for, for coming, visiting with us every month and sharing the knowledge that you have. We hope that this inspires you to plant more native plants and that you uh, are empowered with the knowledge and the skills to do that. Uh, We'll have our next one on January 20th, and we hope you have happy holidays. Thank you.